You want to hear an incredible story? I'll tell you an amazing story. The story happened to me. And if it wouldn't have happened to me, I don't know if I would have believed it, but because it happened to me, I have no choice but to believe it. Now this story happened about six years ago. At the time, I had two kids, a girl and a boy. And every single year, me, my wife, and my kids, we traveled to a camp called Camp Marasha. The school that my, me and my wife work for, Orhana, we have a four-day Shabbaton for the girls. It's very inspirational, and the girls get a lot of chizik from it. And we go from Thursday until Sunday. So we're leaving the house on Thursday. We get all the stuff to the car. We're driving, and I look at the gas. I realize we don't have enough gas. So I figured, you know, I'll make sure to remember to get gas, but it slipped my mind. And then I ended up driving, and I was almost by the camp, and I figured, okay, I'm sure there are gas stations around the camp. I'll fill up there. And again, somehow, don't ask me how, I forgot. I ended up getting to the camp without filling up the gas. And then I had to run for Mincha and Aravit, and I left, and I thought maybe I'll find a gas station on the way. I didn't. I ended up coming back to the camp, and I realized that already it's way past the E, which means... My gas tank is very empty, and I have to fill up as soon as possible. So I told my wife, don't worry, I'll make sure to fill up the first thing in the morning when we leave on Sunday. I'll go and fill up. So four days passed, Thursday till Sunday, and we had a good time. Shabbos went pretty well. And then come Sunday, everyone leaves. Now, we're always somehow the last people to leave. And I don't know if you can relate to me, but, you know, running late and things, uh, everyone left and we're still in the camp and we're still packing, you know, all our stuff and we're getting all our stuff ready together. We get into the car and we're leaving the camp. As we're leaving the camp, I realize the GPS is not working. It's not roaming. It's not catching service. So I turned to my wife. I said, listen, there's two ways out of here. You make a right out of the camp or you make a left. Last time I remember, I made a left turn. I'm sure I'll make a left turn now. I'll get to the main road. I'll eventually hit the highway and I'll make my way to the gas station. I'm sure that the GPS is going to start roaming at some point and we'll make, make sure to find the gas station. Now the first miracle of the story is that my wife didn't even argue with me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Although she has a better sense of direction. And I should probably listen to her more often. You know, women have more intuition. So we're driving. And I'm making a left turn. I'm making a right turn. I'm going straight. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just hoping eventually I, my GPS is going to start roaming. And I'm starting to get nervous. I'm starting to panic. And my wife is always calm. And she says, don't worry, everything's from Hashem. This car could fly, it could run on nothing, just like it could run on gas, it could run on air. And I'm like, okay, this is great, and you know, I'm happy having a Muna over here, but I'm like, you know, panicking, and I'm getting very nervous, and I'm starting to sweat, and I literally see it's way past the E, and I've been dra- traveling for already almost 20 minutes. And I know there's probably, at this point, I'll probably have no gas. I'm thinking already, how am I, I have to figure out a solution of how to get myself out of this mess. I was thinking I would get out of the car and I'm going to walk back to the camp from where we came from and I'll get some help. But then I realized I made so many turns I'll have no, I have no idea how to even get back to the camp. I'll probably get lost. I'll leave my kids and my wife in the middle of the forest. So I'm traveling, I'm driving and we go, I'm driving and driving and it's going less and less and at this point I'm like, we're already by zero miles. We're like we're almost by zero miles. There's no way we're going to make it. And then my wife says, wait, I see a house. I'm like, a house in the middle of the forest. What is this, Goldilocks? She says, no, I'm serious, there's a house. I turn around, I see there's a house with a garage that was open. That indicates there's life somewhere there. I'm like, great. Let's go see if there's someone home. Come out, I pull up to the front of the house, come out of the car, come up to the door. I hear a dog barking inside. I knock on the door. A man comes out, looks at me like, I'm crazy. Like, what are you doing in the middle of the forest? I'm looking at him like, he's crazy. Who lives in the middle of the forest? And then he says, can I help you? I said, yeah, well, I didn't want to make myself sound you know, that crazy. I said, well, I'm looking for the nearest gas station. He says, the nearest gas station? Where are you coming from? I said, from Camera Shai. He says, the nearest gas station is an hour away from the camp you came from, but from, you should have made a right and go for an hour. Instead, you made a left, and now you have to go back from where you came from, and you have to get to the gas station. You, have to, you should have made a right. And then he looks at me, and he says, do you even have enough gas to get to the gas station? And I'm like, Haha, no. <laughs> And he looks at me, he looks at my wife, he sees my two kids in the back. He says, woman, well, I'll be right back. He goes inside his house. I'm thinking, what in the world is this guy going to come out with? A map? I'm for sure sleeping here tonight. I'm going to probably rent you know, the uh, room in this guy's place, who knows. And eventually he comes out. He comes out with a shotgun. No, I'm just kidding, not a shotgun. <laughs> and he comes out with the perfect amount of gas that I needed to get to the gas station. Five gallons of gas. And then I, I couldn't stop thinking. I'm like, thank you so much. You know, you really didn't have to. He says, of course. And he starts filling up my gas. And as he's filling up the gas, the GPS starts roaming. 
and it finally gives me directions to the gas station. And I just couldn't, I, I, we thanked him profusely. He says, don't worry about it. He says, you know, maybe you, know, you guys are Jewish. You know, maybe you could pray for my dog. He's sick. I'm like, don't worry, tell me what your dog's name is. He told me his dog's name is Scott or something. I said, I'll pray. Scott, Ben, what's your name? And I, I said, I'm going to pray for you and for your dog. Thank you so much. And he says, of course, no problem. My pleasure. And the least you could do is maybe sometimes, if you ever see someone else in need, someone needs help, maybe you could help them and don't expect anything else in return. I said, of course, absolutely. I got into the car with my wife and we drive off. Now, this is another crazy part of the story. My wife turns to me in the car. She says, do you understand what just happened? I said, yeah, what are the chances? We found some random guy in the middle of the forest. Who knows what he's doing over there? And he has a dog. Who knows who this dog was? It's probably, who knows, maybe he was Eliyahu Hanavi. Who knows who he was? And he saved us from this forest. And we're so thankful to him. He says, no, don't you get it? He says, what? What did I miss? She says, every single year we come to this camp. We never had a problem with the gas, and we never had a problem with the GPS. Somehow this year when we had a problem with the gas, we had a problem with the GPS. And therefore, imagine if the GPS would have been roaming and it was been working as we were leaving the camp. It would have guided us to get to the nearest gas station, which was an hour away. We didn't even have enough gas for 30 minutes. Who knows what would have happened to us as we would have been driving on the highway. God forbid, the car would have stopped, could have ended up in a car accident, or who knows, maybe I would have ended up pulling over to the side of the road. And who knows if we would have gotten home that night. But Hashem says, by you making that left turn, which you thought was the wrong turn, was in truth the right turn. Because today, I'll be your GPS. In order for you to get home, you have to make that left turn. And then you're going to have to get to this guy. He's going to fill up your gas and give you the perfect amount of gas to get to the gas station. And that's Hashem running your life. We say it every single day, Hashem, you guide the footsteps of man. We don't always understand why we end up in certain places in our lives. We don't always understand why we have to end up where we end up. But rest assured that God has a plan. And He has a plan for everybody. And God is the ultimate GPS of this world. And God guides every single one of us to the destination that we have to get to in life. Because He knows that this is the best place for us to end up.